the true freshman laid a big block on that allowed another true freshman, Lamont Pegues, to make good yards. Well, Steve, he looked like a little water bug finding the open spot in that defense, and he slid along around the scrimmage and then got outside and displayed excellent speed as he took it down the field. First and 10 at the 25 of Georgia Tech. Patrick Sapp is a wide receiver for Neilon Green, who tucks it under and runs up under the 20 yard line to the 19. Jamal Cox with the tackle, but Bill, I'm surprised they're allowing Neilon to do a little more on the option than we thought. Well, they probably say he's got a sore shoulder. He can't throw the ball, so they're going to get the best out of him on these option plays. And he's executing it very well. He's done a good job two times keeping that ball up inside. Hey. Second down and about four. Eight of six on the play. And off goes to McKees. There's a flag down on the play. Patrick Bradford, the true freshman from Georgetown, South Carolina, in on the tackle. Let's see what the flag is all about. Both of these coaches, Bill, emphasize the penalty is going to be against Georgia Tech. Both of these coaches emphasize getting things done early, getting a big play early. Both sides. Defense, five yard penalty, previous spot, first down. They needed four, they got five off the penalty, so it's a first down. Tommy West says we've got to get something in the air early. The halfback pass was an attempt at that. And Georgia Tech would like to do the same. First and 10 and the 14. Priester and Pegues the setback. And off Priester the fullback inside the 15 down to the 12. Rodney Wilkerson is there with Noose. Bill Noose, the fifth year senior out of Bellport, New York. Well, that was just a straight little fullback dive up inside, and they really like Priester at fullback. They think he's an all around football player, good runner, and good blocker. Clemson driving at the 12. Second down. And about seven. Green with a pitch to McGee's. McGee's wrapped up on the corner by Nathan Perryman. The sophomore from Columbia, South Carolina, makes a nice stop. That was an excellent play by Perryman. He just avoided the blocker, stepped outside, and made the tackle on Pekees. Watch as we watch now as we see Green coming down, coming down the line. He pitches the ball a little early. But there's Perriman right there coming up as he avoided the block by Marcus Henry. That's in his march 54 yards all on the ground. They're at the Georgia Tech 11. Here's Green with the tap with the carry. Gets out of Wilkerson's hold and gets down into the hold of Don Hickson at the four yard line. Well, he did an excellent job of breaking that tackle. It looked as if they had him hung up and he just kept plugging and kept going and broke the tackle and went down in there, I think close for first down yardage. They're gonna make a measurement. Let's take a look at it now. Watch Nelson Green come out, kneel on. Kneel on, keeps the ball up inside, avoids the tackle by Wilkerson, number 40, and then comes in and Jamel Cox, the outstanding linebacker, makes the stop. Cox, by the way, leads the Atlantic Coast Conference in tackles with 112 tackles this season. Clemson first and goal at the four yard line. They've been very effective in these situations. Ten times they've been here. Eight touchdowns, a field goal, and a turnover. Ninth play of the drive. Priester, the setback along with Emory Smith. This is Priester. And he tries to get to the three and gets stood up by Rodney Dicker, uh, Wilkerson. And Elliott Fortune also in there on the tackle for Georgia Tech. Well, Priester, as I mentioned earlier, Steve, they really like the Clemson coaches like Priester. He's just a young freshman, but he's a 100% guy all the time. They say in practice he goes hard, and every ball game he gives 100%. So he's got the eye of the coaching staff of Clemson. Second down and goal. Smith and Priester the setbacks. Triple tight end set. Green with the pitch to Priester on the ball. Is the one who hits him right there. A loss of a yard to the five, or actually to the four yard line. Mike D, sophomore out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida, in on the stop. Well, let's take a look at it now. Green coming down the line. He pitches out to Priestead. Watch this tuck. Mike D does a good job coming in, coming up from his free safety position and making the hit. Third down and goal from the four. 
hitting wide out one side. Kenya Brooks back in the ball game at the other. Pekees replaces Smith at the tail. There's Green tucking it up under and trying to run. Nothing there. Jamal Cox is the man who stops him. He was looking for Crooks in the end zone. Didn't look like Crooks made the cut. Well, he was trying to run the little fade pattern, but. You know, we talk about Jamal Cox. He's all over the football field. This guy, he's going to be around the football. Let's take a look at it. Elon Green back to pass. He was going to throw in a little fade pattern. He couldn't find the open receiver. And watch number 39 come up. He has an ability to accelerate to the football. Here's the kick for the field goal. It is good by Nelson Welch from 25 yards out. And the Clemson Tigers get one on the board. They wanted six, but they couldn't get it. Welch with the three will return after these messages from your local ACC station. Clemson with Nelson Welch's seventh consecutive field goal without a miss, 3-0 over Georgia Tech. Let's update the injury situation with Brett McMillan. Well, Steve, uh, Kenyon Crooks, as you said, already back in the game. Dexter McLean, ankle injury. He's had an ice down, taped up. He's doing a little running behind the bench now. He will be back in. So the Clemson Tigers, with Jeff Sauve getting set to kick off, have the lead 3-0. Back to receive Omar Cassidy and Nathan Perriman. Perriman to the top of your screen. On a beautiful day here in Death Valley. Clemson marched down the field, 54 yards. 58, actually. Took him five minutes to do it. Welch with a 25-yard field goal. Came into this game needing 20 to take the all-time ACC scoring lead. He already has the all-ACC kicking points lead and the scoring championship of all time at Clemson. And this is Jeff Sauve getting set to kick it away. Sauve and Welch share the kickoff duties, although Sauve does the bulk of it. And we've got a problem with the clock down on the field. Matter of fact, uh, the end zone, matter of fact, all the scoreboard clock areas have gone out. We have 8.33 remaining here in the first quarter, and they're looking to repair that clock at this point in time. There's there's the, there's the scoreboard clock, and there you, you can see the problem here at Death Valley this afternoon. Steve, you were talking about Welsh. He has kicked 68 field goals in his career here at Clemson, and he's the all-time field goal kicker in the Atlantic Coast Conference, and uh, what a job he's done. And what a job Florida State does. They avenge the loss to Notre Dame today down at Orlando. Of course, for all the scores, there's the Jefferson Pilot score line, just the scores that you want. 1-900-267-5757. Kids, check with your folks before you start talking. Jeff Sauve getting set. The scoreboard still has a problem. The horn has now gone off. Now they've got it back working. Now they'll have to rack up 833 on the clock to get us back and even. I don't think either coach wants to start the first quarter over again. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe George O'Leary. Maybe George O'Leary does. <laughs> and, uh, and the race led three points at Clemson has. Let's get out of the sidelines again at Brett McMillan. Well, Steve, these teams have been playing since 1898, off and on, not every year, but believe it or not, this is only the eighth time that they have played at Clemson, and they did not play one game here until 1974. You see, Clemson used to go down to Georgia Tech and get a big payoff every year and come back home. Well, now, ironically, Clemson Stadium is almost twice the size of Georgia Tech, so they don't mind playing at home at all. No, the Georgia Tech players, I think, enjoy coming here after the week that they have had. This is an excellent atmosphere to get your head right back into football. In. If you can't get into football be after being here, well, maybe you have some serious questions about yourself. Well, you can definitely get into football, but, uh, you know, I don't know if Georgia Tech will be happy coming up to play Clemson. If, if Georgia Tech played Clemson as many times as Clemson played Georgia Tech down in Grand Field, that record would be a lot more balanced right now. I think it's something like 37 and 19 in favor of Georgia Tech, but they are only two and five here in Death Valley, and they're trailing the Tigers right now. Jeff Sauve getting set to kick. The scoreboard clock is fixed again, and we're ready for football again. The officials position themselves properly, and Omar Cassidy and Nathan Perriman, who have been waiting half the afternoon are ready for Sauve's kick. Yeah. 
Salve drives Cassidy four yards deep. He's going to come out. Cassidy out to the 24 yard line, maybe the 25. In on the tackle, David Zeiler, the senior out of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, making the tackle. And it's going to be Georgia Tech back with the football at their own 25. Let's take a look at that series record between these two teams. Georgia Tech 39 17 and 2, but the last four have been extremely close. Their last win on this field came in their national championship year of 1990. Look at Bill looking at first and 10 at his own 24. Jason Bender across the formation in motion. This is CJ Williams. And Williams ran into his own receiver, Cassidy, crawled up his back to the 28 yard line. Marvin Cross. Out of Durham, North Carolina, the junior coming in on the tackle. Well, C.J. Williams is a converted defensive back, and I was talking to Tommy Luganbill before the game. He said that C.J. Williams really runs hard, and if there's not a, a spot there for him to find a little crease, he'll make one. Second down, and about six. And off C.J. Williams again, up over the 30, up to the 31, gain of about two. Well, George O'Leary, the coach of Georgia Tech, said one thing he wanted to establish was try to establish a running game. He felt like this was important to do this, to loosen them up so Luke and Bill could throw the football. And he's certainly trying to come out and do that. Georgia Tech, 106 out of 107 Division 1A schools in rushing offense at only 74 yards a game. And now looking at third and three. Bill in trouble. Lamar Simpson in pursuit. The pass is complete. And it's to the tight end, Todd Vance, at the 49 yard line of Clemson. What a catch by Vance. A throw on the run by Tommy Luganville. Well, as we can see, it was excellent line protection by the Georgia Tech offensive line. They kept Clemson out of there. Of course, Luganville could not find an open receiver, pull it down, watch him as he throws the ball out. And watch fans go up. What an excellent play. Goes up over the head of the defender and pulls that ball in. First first down for the Georgia Tech offense this afternoon. This is Papashak in motion. And here's C.J. Williams. And Williams makes a hole where there was literally Bill Dooley none. He gets that's, to the 43-yard line. That's great second effort running. He attacks the tacklers, and he picks up extra yardage. That's the kind of back you like to see. Those linemen love to see the, that type back up in front. They like to block for a guy like that. Well, it inspires them. Either you block or you're going to get run up the backside. Watch Williams. He goes in there, breaks one tackle, two tackles. He's still going, three tackles. Just good second effort. Push Marvin Cross back two yards. Second down now at six. But this time, Carlos Curry would have none of C.J. Williams' antics. He stops him cold at the 44-yard line. That's Curry's second tackle in this drive. That's good penetration. Excellent penetration. Curry, a junior out of Decatur, Georgia, started as a true freshman. Let's take a look at it right there. He just whipped the center's block, came in and back of him, back of Cheever, number 65, and made the stop. That's not a bad center to beat either. Oh, he's a very good center. Third and six now. Georgia Tech trailing here, three nothing. Luganville would play action, and a blitz is on. The pass complete. And it is complete to Donnie Davis. Donnie Davis, the former starting quarterback out of Burlington, North Carolina, has really become adept at wide receiver and makes the first down for the Yellow Jackets inside Clemson territory at the 35. Well, the Georgia Tech coaches were talking about how Davis had come along. He runs an out pattern, does an excellent job holding on to that football. That was a bad, that was a difficult pass to catch for another reason. He had the sun looking right back at him. Logan Bill hands off to C.J. Williams on first down. Carter in pursuit, but Williams drags him for a nine-yard gain to the 26-yard line. Well, again, we're talking about trying to establish a running game and not coming out and throwing that ball every time, and Georgia Tech is working it very effectively. A good game plan to give that ball to C.J. Williams. As you suspected, though, Bill, the emotion quite high for Georgia Tech this afternoon. Well, that's exactly right. We said that it would be at a peak, and it certainly is. Cassidy split wide left, Bender wide right. 
Papashak in motion on second and short. Three down for Lubinville. He goes to Williams. Nice block on the corner by Papashak that sprung him for a first down down to the 17 yard line. A gain on the play up close to nine more. Well, they've got a good. Good game plan going. Let's take a look at it. Papashak is coming back now. Watch number 89, Papashak, make that block that springs C.J. Williams loose down the sidelines. Georgia Tech looking at the ninth play of this drive. They're in the red zone now at the 17-yard line of Clemson. They started at their own 25. Luganville has Papashak in the backfield along with C.J. Williams. Here comes a handoff to Williams, but Wardell Rouse was in his face as soon as he got the handoff at the 23-yard line. Well, it was just a little miscommunication. Papashak did not actually have time to get back to make the block on Rouse. We'll see it right on your screen. Number 89 just couldn't get to Rouse. Of course, Rouse did an excellent job, number 13, of coming in, and he's one of those outstanding linebackers that we've been talking about. Uh, one of the top leading tacklers on the Clemson defense. Well, when he saw Papashak coming back in motion toward him, he had to know that the play was coming to his side. Here's Luganville. Throw is complete to Vance again. His second big catch on this drive, and he's down to the 14-yard line. Barber is there on the tackle with Andre Carter and Dexter McLean, and it's going to be a gain on the play of about six yards. It'll bring up third down. And close to seven. We talked at the offset that the running game is helping the passing game, and we see Luganville hit Vance for good yardage. And of course, that brings up a, a situation now that they've got a chance. It's not real long. There's Luganville complete on all three, looking at third down, however, and seven. At the 15 yard line. Pass to the flat is complete to Williams, and a great shoestring tackle by Tim Jones. The fifth year senior from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Well, that was an outstanding play by Jones to come up and make that stop. Had he have not made that tackle, he may have gone all the way into the end zone. Luke and Bill goes back a three step drop. He throws the ball right out and watch 56 come up. Excellent tackle on C.J. Williams, the tailback of Georgia Tech. Here's Chris Leone to kick. A 31-yard field goal out of the hold of Graham Stroman. There's the kick. And it is going to be wide right. So Georgia Tech drives from their own 25-yard line, and they come up empty. They still trail 3-0. We'll be back after this message from CarQuest Auto Parts. This telecast is brought to you in part by Hardy's, your tailgating headquarters and a proud partner with the ACC. Chris Leone is seven for 12 on the season. Two of his seven kicks have been in excess of 40 yards, but a 31 yarder at a severe angle. He missed at the tail end of that drive and Georgia Tech comes up empty. Clemson with the football again. Elon Green with a good play fake passes complete to Stefan Wynn for a first down at the 35 yard line. The tackle by Brian Stewart Good play fake by Nelon Green. Well, let's take a look at it as Green comes out and fakes the sweep to Peekwish, and he comes out and he finds number 83, Stephon Wynn. Stephon does a good job bringing that ball in. That's good yardage. 15 to be exact at the 35 yard line. First and 10. Here's the handoff to Pegues, freshman from Thomasville, North Carolina. And Nathan Perryman and David Hendricks come up to make the stop. There's no gain on the play. Well, Pegues tried to take it outside, and Perryman just came up and defeated the blocker and made the play on him. Perryman's from the state of South Carolina. They have a lot of South Carolina natives on this Georgia Tech defense. He's from Columbia, South Carolina. There's Nelon Green as he brings the Clemson offense to the line. First and ten. The option pitch goes to McGee's, and McGee's runs into Jamal Cox, who's one of the top tacklers in the ACC. 112 coming into this one, and Jamal Cox, a senior out of Baltimore, makes the stop. Well, the option play had been effective earlier, but we come down. I think the fullback went the wrong way on that time, and McGee's was out there by himself. And as you mentioned, Steve. There's Jamel Cox. He's all over the football field. He gets around that football, and that's what you like to see as a coach. 
a defensive coach to see a guy like Cox. Loss of four, third and 14 for Clemson. Out of the shotgun. Green. That throws deep once hit incomplete. Some contact on the play, but it's ruled incidental, and the punting unit comes on. Well, that time Georgia Tech went to their nickel defense. They put an extra defensive back in the ball game. Number six, he came in, and they took a lineman out. So Nelson Welch is on to punt. Welch as a punter averages uh, something to the order of 36.8 yards a kick. Here's Perryman. Perryman taking over those duties from Lethon Flowers gets out to the 40 yard line. So it's a 39 yard kick by Welch and about a seven yard return by Perryman and Georgia Tech has the football back in pretty good shape at their own 40 yard line. So they stop the Clemson defense the big second down play on the pitch. Runs them back and gives the Georgia Tech offense pretty good field position. Next Saturday, our Exxon ACC Game of the Week. Many of you will see the Battle of the Palmetto State as Clemson hosts the Gamecocks of South Carolina. Others will see arch, arch rivals Duke and North Carolina face off from Durham. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Tommy Luganville to Jeff Papashak is tight end complete at the 47-yard line. Tim Jones makes the tackle along with Andre Carter. It's a gain of about seven on the play. Well, that's misdirection, Steve. Luganville came out and faked that time to uh, C.J. Williams, came around and hit Papajak on a very good game. Papajak was driving, dragging across uh, the line. Second down, and about two. Donnie Davis in the formation, wide out to the top side. The handoff to C.J. Williams. And Williams is over midfield and has a first down. Well, they're doing a good job of mixing the run and the pass in and keeping uh, Clemson defense off balance. They're not settling into one particular thing of running the ball or throwing it. They came out and threw it on first down, came back and ran it on second down. So they're doing a good job of mixing it up. Darnell Stevens in on the tackle as you look over the shoulder of all ACC candidate Michael Cheever. First and ten. Logan Bill to hand off to Williams. And Williams has some running room. And Williams again continues to impress, carrying Andre Carter with him down to the 43 yard line. There's a flag on that play, Steve. See and what it, Mike Dover, the referee, has to say here. It's offside Clemson. see what the decision is going to be. It looks like they're going to take the penalty and get an extra down in four down in the four down area. Scoreboard clock has run out here in the first quarter. Offsides defense five yard penalty from previous spot first down. So they'll take the extra five yards. Clock has run out of time here in the first quarter or at least indicated as such. The officials haven't made note of it yet. But the show, the, the end zone, apparently they've got maybe one more play left here in the first quarter. Less than a second to go. Luganville, big rush is on by Stevens. Wardell Rouse will help Stevens on the sack. Back at the Georgia Tech 43 yard line. A 14 yard loss on the play as the first quarter comes to a close. Clemson leads it by a field goal. We're back at Clemson on a beautiful day here in the upstate. Clemson's Nelson Welch with a 25 yard field goal. The only difference in this ball game. The Lee Apparel first quarter stat shows Clemson with a rushing yardage. Georgia Tech with a passing yardage and together they're about even. Of course the quarter can't end on a penalty and Georgia Tech may rue the penalty that that first quarter ended on because they wound up on that free play at the end of the quarter taking a 14 yard loss. So it's second down and 18. Clemson now looking into the sun at their own 43 yard line. Tommy Luganville back to throw. Stevens on and a blitz. The pass is incomplete intended for Omar Cassidy. 
Well, that was good pressure put on then by Darnell Stevens, number 30. And let's, the last time, uh, let's watch as Luganville goes back. And here comes number 30. He'll show up in your screen right now, coming in and putting the pressure, making Luganville get rid of that football earlier. Stevens is one of the leading sackers on the team, along with Wardell Rouse. Both of them have five sacks this season. Georgia Tech is two for four on third down conversions. They've hit their last two. This will be third down and 18. Luganville back to throw, blitz is on. Pass complete to Jason Bender. And he's got it at the 33 yard line of Clemson. A first down and then some for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Well, that was right in the hole, right over the head of Dexter McLuhan, number nine. They were playing a two deep secondary. Watch Luganville hit it right in the crease. You can see it now right over Dexter McLuhan, number nine. Gain of 23. Good catch by Bender. Bender wanted to be more than just a punter on this team. Was told in the offseason he was going to play a big role as wide receiver. And he gets a big third down conversion. Here's C.J. Williams. Williams on his way. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. I really like this guy, Williams. He, uh, he's got speed, and he knows how to turn it on when he gets that football. C.J. Williams, 23 yards for the score. Watch Williams as he comes out, breaks it outside, outruns the Clemson tacklers, and heads all the way into the end zone. As I mentioned earlier, this C.J. Williams was a converted defensive back. They ran out of tailbacks. They had a number of injuries, and he's come in and just done an excellent job for him. Chris Leone to kick the extra point. As Georgia Tech with one big play from 32 yards out. Gets the score, and the point after is good by Leone, who's now 16 of 17 on the season. And C.J. Williams out of... West Point, Georgia, a red shirt freshman, and as Bill said, a converted defensive back. They ran out of tailbacks this year because of the injuries. And he puts the score on the board with 14-41. Well, they've got a good scheme going with Papa Shack back in there and that H back, and they hand the ball off. Watch CJ just outrun everyone here, gets a step on him, and he takes it into the end zone. 32 yards out. And that after a drive threatened to get mired down in a penalty, Georgia Tech, the big third down and 18 pass to Jason Bender. That set them up on the very next play. C.J. Williams from 32 yards out takes it in. And it's 7 to 3, Georgia Tech in the lead. Getting set to kick for Georgia Tech. That's going to be Dave Frakes, freshman out of Rockford, Illinois. Andre Humphrey, number 34. Andre Williams, number 25. Is, they're back deep to take the kick. 14-41 left to go on this first half of play. There's no bowl bid up for grabs in this game. These two teams are probably going to spend the postseason at home. But there's a lot of pride on this football field this afternoon, both sides. Kick goes out of bounds. And Clemson likely will elect to take it at the 35 yard line. There's C.J. Williams. Not too emotional about things. Trying to keep everything into perspective. <laughs> Georgia Tech. Probably not Little definitely man. not as bad as their record indicates at one and seven. And, and it seems like Bill it's been an eternity since the, the game with Arizona where they led the preseason number one in some polls with two and a half to play. Well, they're a lot better football team, as you mentioned, than a one victory team. And off goes to Lamont Pegues. Pegues shows it quick up the field. He's got the first down and more. Knocked out of bounds. A lot like the way Lamont Pegues made the tackle of miss him. He just little fun of steps. Let's take a look at it. As Pekis cutting back against the green, and watch his feet right here. There's number four going to make the tackle on him, and he just gives him a little head fake and goes right by him. And number 29 comes in, and he makes the tackle for Georgia Tech. Man, last name is Joseph. He's nowhere to be found on the roster for Georgia Tech. <laughs> well, that's why I couldn't call his name. That's right. 
We had a look at the back of his jersey. The gain on first down is out to the 44 yard line of Georgia Tech. You at home are seeing as much as we have on this particular play. Second down and eight. Henry Smith, handoff goes to Lamont Pegues, and Pegues straight ahead following the block of Smith into the hole, gets to the 42, gain of a yard, and that's about it. This is a young uh, offensive football team at Clemson. Most of them are freshmen. In fact, the entire offensive backfield are freshmen. And then there's about three or four of the offensive linemen. So it's really got a lot of youth on it. And uh, what's carried this Clemson football team earlier has been the defense. Coming up on third down now. Third down and about six yards to go. Elon Green. Back to pass, it is incomplete. Intended there for Marcus Hinton. A junior out of Powder Springs, Georgia. That brings the punt unit on, and so Clemson will try to kick Georgia Tech deep. Nelson Welch will do the honors. He'll have the son as his ally. Nathan Perriman is going back deep. Perriman taking the place of Lethon Flowers who has seen some action today. Welch skies it in an attempt to pooch it deep and gets a favorable roll inside the 20. And it'll stop there at the 17 yard line. It's a 26 yard punt, but no return. And that's where Georgia Tech will get the football back at their own 17. We'll be back. the band of Georgia Tech striking up across the way as the Yellow Jackets find themselves leading in this ball game seven to three over the Clemson Tigers in our Exxon ACC game of the week Steve Martin Bill Dooley Brett McMillan at Memorial Stadium in Death Valley look at Bill looking into a tough sun now he's closing hours before it goes down beneath the stadium rim and CJ Williams rams himself right up over the 20 yard line to the 24 he really runs hard well he does and I think Georgia Tech has come out and said we want to establish the run it's going to help us in the passing game and the passing game has helped them in the running game so they've tried to strive to get balance in that offense and C.J. Williams is certainly doing that for him. They only average 2.6 a carry coming into this game very low one of the lowest averages in the country but they've done very well here today a 32 yard run by C.J. Williams but this one's going nowhere Raymond White redshirt freshman from Clinton Mississippi in on the tackle he's the backup nose guard and watch Raymond get penetration number 97 and he hits C.J. Williams in the backfield that's good penetration by the backup nose guard White loss of four on the play you know that touchdown by C.J. Williams, only the third rushing touchdown for Georgia Tech this season. I believe that's the longest run by Georgia Tech this season. They need a long run here, third and eight. Luganville over the middle, a pass to Vance is complete, but he's shy of the first down at the 24. Gain of about four on the play. Well, Clemson had six uh, defensive backs in the ball game that time. They used what we call the old dime defense. That was Vance, number 82. Here comes Jason Bender. Back to kick it away. Gets a good one out. Humphreys will try to return it from the 24. It's a 50 yard kick by Bender and a three yard return. In on the tackle, Eric Billingsley of Georgia Tech, along with Boyd Andrews. Well, first junior presents around the ACC. Florida State winning over Notre Dame, 23-16. North Carolina, big over Wake Forest today, avenging their loss to Clemson. And look at that one. Virginia losing again. November's a tough month for George Welch's team. Maryland comes up with a big win. It really has been a tough month for the last three or four years for the Virginia Cavaliers. And this uh, year is fall right into line with the other years. Holding, receiving team, post scrimmage foul from the end of the kick, 10 yards, first down. So that backs Georgia Tech, or rather Clemson, back to their own 16, actually 17 yard line. 
Maryland with the win today evens their record at 500. Five and five. What a victory for Mark Duffner's crew. First and ten for Clemson at their own 17. A handoff Lamont Pegues, the true freshman. Finds his way up to the line of scrimmage and very little yardage beyond that. James Richards. Richard freshman from Calhoun, Georgia, in on the tackle. You know, Coach George O'Leary talking to him prior to the ball game. He said he was going to try to stack their defense up in there and force Clemson to have to throw the football, make them do something that they really don't want to do. And he certainly has done that in the early part of this ball game. He's got seven in the box this time. Here comes Green. The pass to Horn is complete at the 21 yard line. How much yardage there? Maybe about three. Lethon Flowers, who was not scheduled to start this game because of a, a five bruise, has come on and played the last two series. Well, you mentioned earlier that Lethon Flowers and Nathan Perriman, the cornerbacks, are both from Columbia, South Carolina. So their emotion, you know, is running high in this ball game. Third down and about five. Big third down call for Neil on Green. Green slips up inside the tackle. Gets to the 26 yard line. He's going to be very close. Boyd Andrews, fifth year senior out of Atlanta, on the tackle. Well, they are coming out with the option play again. Nealon Green fakes to the fullback. Smith keeps up behind him. And I believe he's going to get the needed yardage for the first down. He's very, very close. He needed the 26 and a half, and the ball is almost to the 27. I think you're right, Bill. I think you got him. Green, the third starting quarterback for Clemson this year. Then Patrick Sapp started the season. Louis Solomon got a start. There you see, he got it. Wasn't even close. Nope. <laughs> That's your coaching instincts. Well, Green has really uh, been effective with the option play in the earlier series. He had one bad play on it, but uh, for the most part, the option play has been a big play in their offense. 9.53 left to go in the first half. Georgia Tech leading here, 7 to 3. Play action for Nealon Green. Pass complete. And it's to Tony Horn at the 33 yard line. Lethon Flowers in on the tackle. It's a gain of seven on the play. Well, we talked about it earlier, they had seven in the box in. They're forcing Clemson to come out on first down and throw a little play action pass, which was effective for them because it's very difficult to run against seven in the box against any any offense that's tough to do. Former quarterback Patrick Sapp now in the slot to the top side. On second down and three, the handoff to Raymond Priester and the true freshman fullback has the first down of the 41 yard line. Keith Brooking in on the tackle, but Priester out of Allendale, South Carolina, these coaches like a lot, got the first down easy. Well, that time they they spread the defense. This is a little dive play to Priester. Watch him hit up inside there. Excellent block on Wilkinson, number 40. Rodney Wilkinson, that was made by Jackson, the right offensive tackle, number 72. First and 10 at the 41. And off to Begees, and Begees is in the secondary. Brought down by Brooking again, but another first down at the Georgia Tech 48 yard line. Now, Pekiz has got that little spurt. When he finds that crease in that defense, he can turn it on. Watch here, number seven. He goes up in there, finds that little crease, and turns it on. Gets good yardage, enough for the first time. There he is coming right at you. Well, he can turn it on. 11 yards on the game. Hand off straight ahead to the fullback, Priester that time, but Rodney Wilkinson and Jamal Cox wrap him up. Not far beyond the line of scrimmage. Well, that's just good defensive play. The number one and number two lead tacklers for the Georgia Tech defense, Cox and Wilkinson, did an excellent job of stopping the fullback Priester on that fullback dive play. Three yard game. It's up second down and about seven. Priester and Pegues in the backfield. All true freshmen back there with Nelon Green. The pass is complete to Henry Guess. Guess down at the 37 yard line. It's a gain of eight on the play. Nathan Perriman on the tackle. Well, number 32 Perryman is really giving Guess a lot of cushion. And Guess goes up 
and catches that ball. You can see Perriman there coming in, and he just gave him a great deal of cushion, and Guess was able to bring it in for the first down. Yes, a junior out of Cordova, South Carolina, first and ten. Clemson moving at the Georgia Tech 36. Georgia Tech in a blitz. The geese go straight ahead and runs into Bill News somewhere around the 34 yard line. Well, Georgia Tech again is trying to come at them on first down, load up their defense to force them into a passing situation. Clemson's taking about six minutes off the clock to get this far from the 16 yard line. There's second down and seven again. The geese flag on the play. Patrick Bradford sat on Lamont Pegues behind the line of scrimmage. Let's see what the flag is all about. Offsides, Georgia Tech. Well, that may have been why Bradford got that big jump on defense and got the penetration. <laughs> Offsides, defense, five-yard penalty, previous spot, the three seconds. Well, Bradford is a true freshman out of Georgetown, South Carolina, down by the Charleston area. George O'Leary looking on. Defensive coordinator this year, brought back, had a four-year contract. The interim head coach and considered by many the insider to get the permanent job. Here's Nelon Green. Heads up on the option and has the first down. Well, that's a big play in their offense. The option play with Nelon Green keeping it. You know one thing, Steve, why Clemson has been so effective, they have not turned that football over. They lead the nation in turnover margin, and they have done an excellent job of protecting that football. They have not, we haven't had a turnover at all by Clemson in this ballgame. You know, that's amazing for as young as they are. A true freshman quarterback, true freshman at fullback and tailback. First and ten, they're in the red zone again at the 17-yard line. The Geese. Headed to the outside, and Pegues is down at the 13-yard line. Ryan Stewart brings him down there along with Grant Bainham. And also Gary Joseph. That's our mystery man in the secondary as well. Well, let's take a look at it as Pegues tries to take the ball outside. Watch him break it outside. But here's a, a good example of a good runner as he cuts back inside on the inside shoulder of the would-be tackle and picks up about three yards. Second down and seven. And off the keys again, and Hickson tries to bring him down. Along with Wilkerson, but he's close to the first down. He's got inside the 10 to about the eight yard line. Well, he can run through arms. You're not gonna arm tackle Lamont Pekees. He has the ability to keep going uh, even though he's hit. So Pekees gets down to the eight. It's a gain on the play of nine yards. Actually, no, it's about six. He brings up third and one. Six yard gain for Pekees. Horn and Hinton is split wide on third and short. Here is Green. He'll call his own number. He's down to the two. He's got the first down. Gary Joseph comes up with the tackle. A gain on the play of six, and it puts Clemson first and goal. Well, that's the old loaded option that they're running, and uh, it's really been effective. Watch the tight end make that block. And Elon Green goes up inside and gets the needed yardage for the first down. A clock-eating drive that puts Clemson in business first and goal. At the two of Georgia Tech. The geese. Got close, got down to the one, but didn't get in. Hughes ran into him along with Rogers. Well, that power was moving back. I thought he was going to be able to push it right into the end zone, but the Georgia Tech defense stiffened a little bit and kept him out of there. This is the 15th play of the drive coming. They have soaked up almost nine minutes off that clock. And they are sitting one yard from a touchdown. Second down and goal at the one. Both ends in tight. And off Priester. Did he make it? Flag on the play. I don't believe he got in there, Steve. It's offside against Georgia Tech. They must have lined up offsides. 
Take a look at it. But watch the Tech defense stiffen. I don't believe Priester was able to penetrate the goal line. Boy, that was close, though, Bill. It I was mean, it was very close, but uh, so yeah. they mark it half the distance. They go to the one half yard line, and they get second down over again. Second and goal from the half yard line. Green calls his own number, and he's not going to get in. Well, there wasn't any movement at all on that, Steve. Good penetration by Cox and true freshman Zach Miller out of Tallahassee, Florida. Well, they got up underneath the shoulders of the blocker, and any time you can do that, you're not going to be able to get any thrust forward. So the Georgia Tech defense did a, a very good job of getting up underneath the blockers. They have an injured player for Clemson. That's Will Young. But now falls to one knee with a helmet off. And we'll stop play here. Will, who has a hearing problem, wears a hearing aid, comes from Clemson, hometown boy, 6'2, 274. Got his first taste of Clemson football selling programs outside Memorial Stadium. If you sold so many, you got general admission ticket to get in, and that's how he saw Clemson football. Furthers a long line of great Clemson offensive linemen, but right now there's concern for him on the field as he's being attended to. Clemson looking at third and goal. They are a foot away from the end zone. There's Young. Watch the Georgia Tech lineman. Watch there as they go up underneath their 69. That's Zach Pillar that makes the penetration that prevents Nelon Green from getting into the end zone. Looks like a stinger there for Will Young as he comes to the sideline. Well, that was a good defensive play by Zach Pillar. I've got to mention that that's good penetration by Georgia Tech. Six inches to go for a touchdown. Third and goal. Clemson. Green in on his own on a busted play. He had no one to hand off to, but Georgia Tech had already bought the fake. Well, that's what you call really selling a fake because everyone converged in on the tailback and Green just took it outside. Green for the touchdown and Clemson retakes the lead. Here's Nelon Green turning around, gonna hand, he can't find his tailback and he goes inside standing up. No one touches him. Nelon Green's first touchdown, here comes the kick and it is good, 348. Left to go here in the first half of play. Clemson takes 11 minutes off the clock to drive 84 yards. Nelon Green puts the Tigers in front. Back at Death Valley, Clemson steps out in front. Nelon Green scores from a yard out. Nelson Welch tacks on the point after, and the Tigers lead it 10 to 7. The scoring drive took seven and a half minutes off the clock. Green in 16 plays marches them downfield and takes it in on what appeared to be a busted play. Looked around for his tailback. And everybody in Georgia Tech was looking for his tailback. Oh, too, so he up, went into the end zone. Well, that's the kind of drive you love to see as a coach, Steve, when you can take close to seven and a half minutes off that clock, keep the ball, and stick it in the end zone. You prevent them from getting that football. Longest drive in terms of time of possession and yardage for the Tigers this season. And you saw Green get his first Gatorade bath. There's the kick by Sauve, and it's picked up by Omar Cassidy at the 13. Cassidy leapfrogs out to the 34-yard line. Let's go to our sideline reporter, Brett McMillan. Well, Steve, update on Will Young. It was a stinger. He'll be back in next time. And as you said, that was, in fact, the busted play for Clemson. Maybe that'll put it in the playbook. It worked pretty well. So Georgia Tech gets a chance to put their offense back out on the field. Both offenses worked pretty well. Georgia Tech drove down the field last time. C.J. Williams has a score from 32 yards out. Nelson Welch and Nelon Green have scored. Michael Smith is in at the tailback spot. He'll get the handoff. Actually, the fullback spot as he gets up to the 41-yard line. Gain of six on the play, and Lamarick Simpson out of Rock Hill, South Carolina, making the stop. Well, Michael Smith has been all over in that backfield. He's played tailback, fullback. He's been the H-back. He's been a 
He's been a versatile player for him and uh, does a good job. Really does. He's averaging over four yards per carry from his fullback position. New quarterback for Georgia Tech, Donnie Davis, getting a couple of snaps. He's already played at wide receiver and caught a crucial third down pass. Hands off to C.J. Williams this time, and Williams is brought down by Andre Carter with help from Mon Wilson. I really like C.J. Williams. Of course, the left side of the offensive line of Georgia Tech does a good job getting a, a good surge as they come off the football, and Mike Smith did an excellent job at fullback paving the way. First down, Georgia Tech at the 46-yard line. Simmons is split wide out, Bender to the top side, but this is going to be Michael Smith, and he is a yard shy of midfield. Gains about three on the play. Coming up on the tackle, Tim Jones and Marvin Cross. Well, the Georgia Tech coaches said that they were going to establish the run, and they've certainly done that, and I think it's really helped their passing game. So no have. About it. 225 and counting. Both teams have all of their timeouts left. Second down and a good long six. Davis rolls out. Davis crosses midfield, driven out of bounds at the 47 yard line of Clemson. Wardell Rouse and Tim Jones chase him out of bounds. Be a gain on the play of about three. Well, Georgia Tech has taken a, a page out of the Clemson playbook. That's the, the option play coming back to the weak side, loaded option. And Davis keeps the ball up inside. The same thing Nelon Green has been doing early in the ballgame. Third down and about four. Georgia Tech three for six on third down. This is Davis's first third down conversion at quarterback. Deep drop pass complete to Williams at the 42 yard line. He's got a first down. It's down in the grasp of Wardell Rouse and Mike Barber. Well, Davis did a good job of holding the football, letting the linebackers sink, and C.J. Williams, he hit him underneath. Let's take a look at it. Watch Davis go back. You can't see it on the screen, but the linebackers sink, and they throw the ball right underneath, and C.J. Williams gets it and picks up the first down. First and 10 at the 41. Tommy Davis on the scamper to the corner, keeps it himself, and Tim Jones. With help from Wardell Rouse, bring him down at the 39-yard line. It's a gain of two. I believe we're seeing Davis in the ball game at quarterback simply they want to get more plays run out of the quarterback position, and Davis certainly gives them that ability to do that. Timeout on the field with a minute 38 left to go. Georgia Tech on the move in Clemson territory. They trail the Tigers by three. Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouses invite you to come by and register for a trip for two to the Outback Steakhouse Gator Bowl. Airfare accommodations, tickets all provided by Lowe's. Lowe's knows home improvement. There's Donnie Davis on the sideline. He took a hit that time out, and he's come to the sideline, and Tommy Luganville is back into the ballgame at quarterback. Georgia Tech with the football, a minute 38 remaining in the first half. They're looking at second and seven, and they're at the Clemson 38-yard line. Trail here by a score of 10-7. Luganville with a little flare out pass to Williams. He's got some running room and he's down to the 28 of Clemson. Good enough for a first down. A gain of 10. Andre Humphrey and Tim Jones on the tackle. Well, that was a little screen where they had the wide outs block out in front of C.J. Williams. And uh, C.J. did a good job of getting that ball up the field. First and 10. At the 29-yard line, Luganville looks, throws the pass, is tipped. Looks like Marvin Cross, the six-foot-four, 253-pound junior out of Durham, North Carolina, got a hold on. We'll take a look at it. Number 91 gets his hands up, Cross right here, right in front of the receiver, and Marvin Cross knocks the ball down. Luganville was in the shotgun at that time prior to the snap. It's his first pass breakup, although he has had an interception this season. Second down and 10. A minute 16. Incompletion stops the clock. Luganville back in the shotgun. Bender and Zachary are split wide. We got a whistle. Play clock went off. 
delay of game against Georgia Tech. And that'll back the Yellow Jackets back to the 34 yard line. Dead ball foul, delay of game offense. Five yard penalty, second down. So that means that kind of takes it out of Chris Leone's field goal range here with a minute 14 left. They've got to get that back and more. They're second and 15. That's They've two. got their uh, nickelback defense on there. Clemson has. Pass is complete Straight. to C.J. Williams. Williams gets up to the 23-yard line. It is shy of the first down. The clock keeps rolling. Andy McCrory and Andre Carter in on the tackle. It'll be a gain of close to 10 yards. Here's a picture of it. C.J. Williams on a little screen. Here's Luganville throwing for Simmons. Incomplete out of bounds. Oh, Rouse good puts pressure. pressure. Good pressure put on by Rouse to lead the rush in of Clemson, number 13. He didn't give Luganville time to set his feet. So that brings the field goal unit on. With 42 seconds left, fourth down and four. But the pass to C.J. Williams put them down at the 23. So this will be a 41-yard kick by Chris Leon. He's two for three from 40-plus. He missed a 31-yarder. And Clemson now will take a timeout to ice him. Leon has hit a 49-yarder this season. So this is within his range. It will be 41 yards, but it will be from the hash mark. You know, uh, Steve, when it gets long yardage, what Clemson is doing defensively, they're putting six defensive backs in the ball game because they respect Georgia Tech's passing game. Andy Ford, number 43, comes in, and they move Andre Humphrey into the what we call the nickelback position. And also Andy McCrory, number five, comes in. He's an ex-defensive back, and he plays a linebacker position for number 12, Barber. Graham Strowman is the holder. He's getting the attention of George O'Leary at this point in time. As you saw him there, he was talking with O'Leary momentarily. He's the holder, and he's also the backup quarterback. We've yet to see him in at quarterback this afternoon. Now, whether George O'Leary would take a chance of not tying this ball game up and possibly going, maybe not for the touchdown, but he needs four yards for a first down, so keep that in mind. Tommy West, I'm sure, has it in mind. It's fourth down and four. Well, with a kicker like Chris Leon, you... Uh, you now they, they've brought the kicker off, and they put Luganville back oh, in. Oh, he's back in then. Now. They're going for it. Fourth down and four. Georgia Tech going for it. Long snap count. They're trying to draw him offside. Luganville took the play clock down as deep as he dared and called timeout. They have one remaining, and the kick unit will come on. Good tactic by George O'Leary. Tried to... Tried to buy a cheap five yards. Clemson wouldn't bite, so he sends the kicker back out before they take the penalty. Well, I think it's a good tactic. I just hope Chris Leon, they didn't get out of his field goal range. <laughs> That's another five yards. Uh, well, no, he got he got timeout before the He got the timeout. Flag. That's exactly right. He got timeout right before the uh, delay of the game. But do you ice the kicker? Your own <laughs> kicker. <laughs> All right. We've got a timeout on the field, 42 seconds left to go. And let's go to the sidelines to Brent McMillan. Well, Steve, we've got a lot of activities coming up at halftime. Of course, scores and highlights, uh, a lot of action so far today with us being in a late game today. We'll also have our best of the ACC, our player of the week, and our play of the week as well, all coming up here at halftime. Steve, back to you. All right, Chris Leone is getting ready. The distance will be about 41. There's very little wind as the wind has died down now in the late afternoon. There's no sun to contend with. Just he and the goalposts out of the hold of Graham Stroman. Leon 7 for 12. Missed the 31 yarder at a severe angle first time. Similar angle here from 41. He 
He's got it. Chris Leone ties this ball game up from 41 yards out with 37 seconds left to go in the first half of play. Leone's eighth field goal of the season, and Georgia Tech ties it at 10-all. Well, we've got an exciting ball game, Steve. Both uh, offenses have, have moved the ball very effectively against the defenses of Clemson and Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, as you said, came out here with an interesting strategy. Let's try to establish the run to make everything go better, and it has worked. They have established C.J. Williams. He scored on a 32-yard run. It has helped the effectiveness of Tommy Luganville, who's made several key third down passes, one to Donnie Davis, another two, actually, to his tight end, Todd Vance. Well, C.J. Williams has certainly been impressive, but I think Papashak moving him back in the backfield has really given him a big man back there as a blocker and has helped uh, pave the way for C.J. Williams on his runs. Dave Frakes getting set to kick it away here for Georgia Tech. 37 seconds left. Now Clemson has two timeouts when they get the football back. Frakes kick taken by Humphrey at the 13. Humphrey up the middle of the field. Big hole. Humphrey gets behind the kicker with two to beat. Humphrey tackled. Knocked out of bounds finally by Zachary at the 18-yard line. Greg Morris helped out. And Clemson has the ball inside the 20 after a 68-yard kickoff return by Andre Humphrey. What a play by Humphreys. You can see the blocking as it develops. Here's Humphrey, number 34. Watch the block by number 39 come up. And there goes Humphrey right by, runs right out of the hands of the Georgia Tech tackler. Watch him turn the speed on right here, Steve. That's, my, uh, that's Mike D, the free safety coming up, number eight, making the hit. First and 10, at the 17, Elon Green. 25 seconds left, pass is incomplete for Henry Guest. He had it, could have had it inside the 10-yard line. He was wide open, just, just dropped the ball, took his eyes off of it. Stops the clock with 20 seconds left. Nealon Green was right on the money with that pass. It hit him right in the hands. And of course, Guest has done a pretty good job. He's caught six balls this year. Brings up second down and 10 at the 18-yard line. Andrew Williams and Henry Guess are split twins to the wide side of the field. Horn to the short side. Elon Green looking for a hit and incomplete. Well, you, go ahead, Bill. Clemson got in their one back offense. They had two wide slots to both sides. And of course, that's a little uncharacteristic of the Clemson offense. Well, Tommy West, when he came here, he wanted to be a little uncharacteristic. Wide open, flexible, wanted to be more of a, a passing team, wanted to get away from the ground game, but then had to get back to it and so they, he could help to establish when it. They, when they got back to it, they started winning. Yes, they did. Bill Noose gets into the Clemson backfield. The flag is thrown here with 16 seconds left. Dwayne Morgan, the tackle on that side. Let's see who moved first. It's a legal procedure against Clemson. So it'll back them up to the 23-yard line. Dead ball, ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, repeat third down. So it's third down coming, and you look, if they can't make 15 here, then Nelson Welch comes back on. We're still within Welch's range here. Green, flare pass to Priest to his fullback. David Hendricks is there on the stop and won't let him go anywhere. In fact, it's a loss of two, maybe three, to the 26-yard line. Well, that's an excellent play by David Hendricks as he comes up from his strong safety position. Let's take a... Here's Green back, throws a little pass out, a little flare pass. Now watch number 15, David Hendricks, come up. What a tackle. He wraps him up, and he doesn't get anything. So Nelson Welch will come on here on fourth down, maybe. Let's see. They're making the decision. Now Welch will come out. Now he has a new holder. Matt Bullman is his holder. 
Elmer Bench is the snapper. His longtime holder, Travis Harvey, off the team or suspended for disciplinary reasons. And so Bullman will have the hold from 42 yards out. Welch has a 53-yarder in his repertoire. The longest this season is 49. There's the kick. It's a low line drive. No good. Looked like it might have been hit at the line of scrimmage, but it was a long one. Welch, that's his first miss in eight tries. And Clemson cannot take advantage of the 68-yard kickoff return by Andre Humphrey. Georgia Tech takes over at the 25-yard line with three seconds to play. Well, Georgia Tech escaped there with, uh, that would have been a big momentum changer for Clemson to go in at halftime but with three points off of that big play out of the kicking game. But Georgia Tech dodged the bullet as the kick was no good. Luganville comes in. They'll do nothing fancy here. They'll just down the football and head to the locker room. Happy at what they've achieved so far here. A 10-10 standoff with the Clemson Tigers. A strong first half by both offenses here this afternoon. And Georgia Tech trying to pick up the pieces of a season that has gone awry with the coaching change coming up. And with Tommy West, here's our Brett McMillan. Well, Coach, offensively, you got a couple of nice drives in the first half. You established the running game like you wanted to do. Yeah, I thought our quarterback did a good job reading the option, but, uh, I mean, we've got to get more points than we're getting. Defensively, any adjustments you're going to make at the half? Yeah, I'd like to think we could mow up a little bit up front. I don't think it's adjustments. I think they're knocking us off the ball right now. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, Clemson coach Tommy West. Right now we're at halftime at Death Valley. It's a 10-10 tie between the Tigers and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. We'll be back with halftime activities after this. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon and their independent dealers and distributors who invite you to stop by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. Rely on the Tigers by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. By Hardee's, your tailgating headquarters and a proud partner with the Atlantic Coast Conference. By BC Powder, no matter where you're hurting, nothing works faster than BC Powder. And by your local Carolina Dodge dealer, home of the minivan store and America's truck stop. Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of the Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, where people are stopping by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. Rely on the Tiger. By Pepsi, be young, have fun, drink Pepsi. By Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. By Lee Apparel, maker of regular, relaxed, and easy fit jeans and casual pants. Lee is the brand that fits. By Delta Airlines, the airline of ACC country. You'll love the way we fly. By Burger King, home of Whopper values. Get your burgers worth at Burger King. And by the all-new Ford Windstar, the future of minivans begins today. We're tied at 10-all as we are just about set to start the second half. Georgia Tech and Clemson having at it. And our Exxon ACC Game of the Week, Steve Martin here along with Bill Dooley and our Brett McMillan had an opportunity to talk just moments ago with Georgia Tech coach George O'Leary. Coach, in the first half, you wanted to establish the running game. It did that. you got to be pleased with the way your team played. They offensively played extremely well, holding the ball on the ground. And defensively, we just got to tackle better. We didn't tackle well, and we covered some of the mistakes with them. And we need another good half. Any adjustments at halftime? We made some defensively for the weak side option and offensively just keep doing what they're doing. All right, Coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, George O'Leary at Georgia Tech, back upstairs. All right, thank you very much, Brett McMillan. George O'Leary said it, just a few adjustments, but he likes the way the, that his offense is cooking right now. He also likes the way, and, and, and unfortunately, Tommy West doesn't like the way that his line on both offensive and defensive seems to be taking the momentum and dominating the line of scrimmage. Well, I think the Clemson defense was anticipating a lot more pass than uh, what Georgia Tech was uh, doing and uh, the run I think fooled him a little bit and I think Clemson now is going to tighten up a little bit this third quarter drive right here is going to determine I think a big outcome in this ball game what kind of momentum they can get 
Clemson lost an opportunity at the end of the first half, missing a 42-yard field goal after a 68-yard kickoff return. Here's Humphreys, who got that return, up to do it again. And he has hit. <laughs> Clements helps brings him down, but the first hit uh, was administered inside, and uh, it's going to be Landers coming up with the tackle. Landers made the first hit to stop Humphrey at the 26-yard line. That's Michael Landers out of Brockton, Massachusetts, a true freshman. And so Neilon Green is back on the field, and there's his uh, report card. Second leading rusher for Clemson in the first half behind Lamont Pegues. First and ten, here's Pegues, and he is stood up by Patrick Bradford. Bradford, the true freshman from Georgetown, South Carolina, with the tackle. Well, Bradford did an excellent job of defeating the offensive block, staying square, and then, of course, meeting Pegues right in the hole. So it's a one-yard gain on the play. Brings up second down and nine. Henry Guest to the sideline. Marcus Hinton and Tony Horn are the wideouts on second and nine, and Pegues is in the slot. There's Neilon Green with play action, and he'll run. Shows his smarts by getting down at the 37-yard line. He's going to be very close to a first down. While we measure it, let's go to Brett McMillan on the sideline. Steve, you remember Kenya Crooks, the wide receiver for Clemson, uh, came off earlier in the first quarter and ended up with a head injury. He's being taken to the hospital for some observation, uh, suffering from a slight concussion. Well, I'm not surprised, to tell you the truth. I mean, his head was snapped back in that hit with Mike D on the very first series. It is a first down for Clemson. Elon Green got it. He gives it to Lamont Pegues, who goes down in the grasp of Rodney Wilkerson at the 41-yard line, a gain of a long three, maybe four. Here's Wilkerson. Wilkerson sells pool and spa supplies in the summer. He's an entrepreneur, you know, and, and Cox is also, he's a vinyl siding salesman. So <laughs> both, line, both linebackers are uh, already entrepreneurs. They're trying to sell their defense here to Clemson. Here's Neilon Green with the fake. He couldn't sell the fake that time at the 44-yard line. Well, Coach, O'Leary, Coach O'Leary said he'd made an adjustment to the option play that they were running to the weak side. Of course, that uh, shot off the keep that Neilon Green had been doing so well. Let's take a look at it. Neilon Green comes out on the option. Priesta, number 27, lead blocker on Wilkerson. And Wilkerson plays off Priesta and makes the stop. So they stopped the option. Play that time. Makes it four out of eight on third down. And now the tight end, Ed Glenn, gets off the line early. And it'll turn a third and three into a third and eight. Well, this is what Georgia Tech was trying to Kid do. Ball, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, repeat third down. Force Clemson into passing situations, and in early downs, you can see seven people in that box. They don't want Clemson to be able to run that ball up inside. They want Neilon Green with a sore throwing arm to have to throw the football and convert third to first. Third and eight. Five-step drop, and then Georgia Tech drops. Elon Green. It is Bullware and Hughes in on the sack. Raleigh Bullware from Columbia, South Carolina. Well, that's good pressure by the Georgia Tech defensive front. Bullware is 6'6, 263 pounds, and he is a, a strong defensive lineman. Ten men on the line of scrimmage to face Nelson Welch's punt. A flag on the play. I believe he got a jump. Uh, the Georgia Tech defender got a jump on the ball. What a kick by Welch. Tackled at the 25-yard line by Chuck Winslow. But let's see what the flag is going to be about. It's a 43-yard kick. It's offsides against Georgia Tech. Now, that was a fourth and eight, so it'll be fourth and three should they accept. Defense, penalty decline, first down. I like that punt by Nelson Welch, too. I oh, wouldn't yeah. want him to do that one over. But it was the end man on the line of scrimmage got a jump on the ball, and uh, it's a good thing it wasn't fourth and four. <laughs> That's right. So it's first and ten now for Georgia Tech at their own 25-yard line. And this is Luganville. Zachary in the 
slot inside the shoulder of Bender. Zachary comes back in motion. Clemson showing eight in the box for C.J. Williams, and that's just too much. Darnell Stevens drags him back. Well, the Clemson defense stiffens up inside and doesn't allow C.J. Williams to, to get any running room there. There's Williams. That's, that's a good job by Williams. The Darnell Stevens came up for the tackle. That's up second and nine. Bougainville rolls out a bit, looks for room, and hits Zachary completed the 40-yard line for the first down. Brian Dawkins in on the tackle of Zachary, but it's a gain of 15 on the play. Well, Zachary has caught 21 passes prior to this ball game, and he uh, he does a good job bringing this ball ball in. Luganville's got plenty of time, and Zachary's right over the middle. The Georgia Tech coaches say he's an excellent athlete, uh, can run and jump. And he's six feet, 182 pound junior. First and ten. Georgia Tech at their own 40. Zachary in motion, and off to Williams. Williams hits the corner in midair and is hit by Tim Jones. A two-yard gain, maybe. But that shows you how exciting Williams is, and he hit Jones so hard, he's hurt. Well, Jones is an excellent linebacker. He uh, He's the leading tackler, 94 tackles. Let's take a look at it. There's C.J. Williams. Zachary, number one, is leading the way, and he's blocking on Tim Jones. And there's Jones coming in, makes a good hit on C.J. Williams. We're talking about Zachary earlier. He uh, he caught nine passes last week against Florida State, had a great day. Jones is going to get some help getting up here, possibly a stinger. They're looking at his leg as well. We'll take a timeout. The score tied at 10 here in Death Valley. We're back at Clemson in the twilight of the day. It's Hall of Fame day here at Clemson. There's Tim Jones. He's OK. And he's getting that lateral movement back after being hit there by C.J. Williams, and we're back in action. Second down now, coming at eight for Georgia Tech at their own 41-yard line. Tommy Luganville. Hands off to C.J. Williams, and Williams finds some running room. He got out of the grasp of Lamarick Simpson, went down thanks to Wardell Rouse and Brian Dawkins. Well, Simpson had it wrapped up, and C.J. Williams just kept running and uh, was able to break that tackle. Williams getting close to the century mark. I don't think Georgia Tech has had a running back goal for 100 yards or more this season. No, they haven't. George O'Leary, interim head coach, defensive coordinator, looking on. This club down third down and two at the 47. And off C.J. Williams, first down. Again, on the tackle, Lamarck Simpson had him by the shoestring, and Brian Dawkins helped out. Well, he runs hard. He just goes up in there, and he, he makes his own yardage, dragging the tackler with him. So C.J. Williams moves the chains, and it's Georgia Tech's time to have a clock exhausting drive. Clemson used seven and a half minutes for a touchdown drive in the first half. Georgia Tech moving the ball, and Luganville's flare pass to Zachary is too tall. It might have been a lateral, but the ball went out of bounds. I believe it was, Steve. If it is a lateral and it is down on the ground, Clemson can only recover it. They cannot advance it, but they would get the football. But you're right, Bill, went out of bounds. And it brings up second down behind the line of scrimmage. Clemson crowd not happy with the call, but... Wardell Rouse did the right thing. In case of doubt, pick it up and run. Make them bring you back. Tommy West says, hey, wait a minute. He's not going to win that argument. Second down and 10. Luganville pulls out quick. Rushes on. The pass is complete to Jason Bender at the 41-yard line of Clemson. Well, Bender does a great job of bringing that club ball in. Georgia Tech had three receivers to that side. Let's take a look at it now. 
Logan Bell's back. He throws it outside. The only way that Bender can catch that ball is to keep it outside of Tim Jones, the linebacker, and they do that. All right, here comes Logan Bell now. It's short of the first down. He's third and one. Hand off Williams, first down. He explodes into the Clemson secondary, and he's brought down to the 32-yard line. Well, the Georgia Tech offensive line is doing an outstanding job, in particular, the uh, left tackle, Curtis McGee. They call him the Iron Man. Let's watch Curtis right there as he opens up a good hole, and that's Barber trying to make the tackle on Williams, and he goes through him. They call McGee the Iron Man because he's played just about every snap this year. Very few offensive snaps he's missed. C.J. Williams over the century mark. First and 10 at the 32 after that eight yard gain. Here's Williams again. And Williams gets down inside the 30. Andre Carter, Tim Jones clean him up there at the 28 yard line. It's a gain of close to two. Well, this is a complete reversal of the Georgia Tech offense. They are completely running the football now and uh, have not thrown the ball very much in this drive at all. Only twice, one complete. Simmons is split wide out. Zachary to the other side after the gain of three. And off goes to Michael Smith. And Smith, the former defensive back, gets up to the 25-yard line. It'll be a gain of close to five. Michael Barber and Tim Jones, the two inside linebackers, made the stop. Barber's been shaking off injuries all year. To the shoulder, to the arm, to the leg. 11th play of this drive coming. It started at the 25-yard line of Georgia Tech. Third and four. Georgia Tech and Clemson tied at 10. Clemson showing blitz. Here's Williams to the outside. Brennan Humphrey picked up there with Brian Dawkins to make the stop. Well, that's an excellent defensive play by Humphreys from his cornerback position. As he comes up, the interior defense forces C.J. Williams outside, and Humphrey comes up and makes the stop. Let's take a look at it. Here's Williams going outside, and there's Humphrey, number 34. What an outstanding job of hitting Williams, not allowing him to fall forward. In fact, keeping him where he was trying to get forward, not making any room. Here comes Chris Leon. He hit a 42-yarder, missed a 31-yarder. This kick will be 47 yards out of the hold of Graham Strowman. Hold is there, and the kick looks like it was touched. Yes, it was. It's a low kick. Brian Dawkins got it. And the drive falls flat on the missed field goal. Let's take a look at it here. As Dawkins, number 20, you can't, you really couldn't tell, but he got his hands on the kick. Dawkins has been an outstanding defensive back and, in fact, is the fourth leading tackler behind the three linebackers. So Clemson takes over. After the missed, bar partially blocked field goal, Neilon Green first and 10 at his own 27, and a handoff to Lamont Pegues, and Jamal Cox stuffs it. Well, you'll always look up. If you've got the football, you're going to see number 39 somewhere around close to that football. They say, you. let's take a look at it here. Watch 39 meet Pegues right in the hole. They say your value to the team is proportion to your distance from the football. Cox is the most valuable always. <laughs> He's always close to it. Play action for Neilon Green on second and nine. Had room, but not enough time to hit Stephon Wynn. Fifth year senior out of Winsboro, South Carolina. And so that brings up third down. And this is what Tommy West did not want to have happen. Have the defense dictate what his offense would run by putting it in third and long. That's exactly right. This is what George O'Leary wanted to do. Make them have to throw that football. And make Elon do it with a sore right wing. Hinton and Guess are split wide to the top side. Williams to the bottom. Rolling top is Green. The pass knocked down and almost intercepted by David Hendricks. Boy, that would have been a big play if Hendricks would have come down with that. 
But it's three downs and out now for Clemson. Let's take a look at it. There's Hendricks, number 15. He goes up in the air and almost comes down with that football. That was the out pattern intended for the wide receiver. He wasn't able to get it there. Welch had a 43-yarder last time. Georgia Tech setting for a return. We have a flag down on the play at the 31-yard line. Perryman has it. It gets out to the 37. A six-yard return after the 38-yard kick, but we got a flag back at the 31, the original line of scrimmage. The play started on a fourth and eight. Georgia Tech was offsides again. So let's see if Clemson gets the kick again. Nelson Welch saying, Offsides, defense, five yard penalty, previous spot, repeat, fourth down. So they're going to kick again. They didn't like the 38 yarder. They're going to say, Nelson, you got another one in there. Oh, well, Welsh, uh, Welsh probably feels like he can kick it a little further this time than 38 yards. So they'll try it one more time. It'll be fourth and three from the 30 six yard line of course this opens up the possibility that you could go on a long count and possibly draw Georgia Tech offside well if the last two times they've kicked they've been offside so possibly they could do it hey why not this is a trend Georgia Tech lines nine eight men now ten on the line and Welch gets off a shorter one this one this time Georgia Tech touched it. Let's see who's got it. No, Georgia Tech's got it back. Georgia Tech has got it back, so they actually gain a yard on the exchange. Score tied at 10. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Let's watch the punt of Nelson Welch again and see what Clemson's screaming about. They might have a case here. Welch got the kick away. Georgia Tech in its attempt to let it roll dead. You'll see what happens. Now the question is, Michael Landers is on the ball. Now he doesn't have possession of it there. Darnell Stevens says he pounced on it, and then Landers apparently got it back. Tommy West takes it all in stride, sends his defense out. Georgia Tech first and 10 at their own 31. Here's C.J. Williams, who's had a stellar day, and he drops the football, and Clemson may get this one. They're waiting until they unpile. Michael Dover waiting. Clemson says they've got it. Well, Clemson is very confident they have it. Second down. They didn't get it. Nope. The ground caused the fumble, said Michael Dover. And Clemson comes up dry again. Let's see it. Well, <laughs> looked like Brian Dawkins got himself the football. That's it. <laughs> oh. Georgia Tech gets a life and a gift. Second down and ten, Luganville. How much yardage there to the nine yard line, a pickup of two. Ryan Stewart runs him out of bounds. Well, he, he got out of a, a big loss. It could have been a big loss back there, and he kept scrambling and getting up inside and picked up maybe a yard or two out of it. Brings up a key third down. Clemson four out of 10 on third down conversions. 34 seconds left to go on a fast moving third quarter. Score tied at 10. Clemson knocking on the door. They need the four-yard line for a first down. They're five yards away from it. Green on the pitch to McGee's, and McGee's is hit by Nathan Perryman. Perryman wore himself off the block of Marcus Hinton and made the stop behind the line. Well, Perryman does an outstanding job of defeating that block by Hinton and coming up and making a big stop. Here's Green coming down the line, and here's, you can see Perryman right there hitting Pegues, number seven. He defeated the block of Hint, number six. And this brings on Welch for a field goal attempt. Welch one of two for the day. This one of 27 yards. The kick is up, and it is good. And Clemson moves out in front. 
They move from their own 16 yard line and Welch gets it from 27 yards out to put the Tigers in front 13 to 10. ACC football is brought to you in part by Siemens for leading edge technologies in electronic and electrical engineering depend on Siemens precision thinking. Nelson Welch's 27 yard field goal caps a drive of about 84 yards. There are some key plays to Marcus Hinton a 38 yard pass play and a, and a 10 yard pass pick up for first down a couple of runs by Raymond Priester and the Tigers step out in front 13 to 10. Oh, this is Omar Cassidy. Flattened at the 13 yard line. Tony DeSue, Brad Pope in on the tackle. Here's the scoring drive for the Clemson Tigers. 11 plays, two to Hinton and two to Priester near the end. Put them in position for Nelson Welch's second field goal of the afternoon. That has now become evening. And Georgia Tech. Out on the football field as we start the fourth quarter. That play came on the very tail end of the third. Luganville on first and ten to C.J. Williams, who's already rushed for 100 yards today, up over the 25-yard line. Wardell Rouse and Raymond White in on the tackle. Well, Georgia Tech is using a zone blocking scheme up front, and C.J. Williams is just finding the crease in that defense. He's going just kind of stuttering and finding the open spot up there and doing a good job of it. Found six yards that time. Second down and four. Williams gets the handle again. Nice block on the corner that time by Carlos Smith that took Barber out of the play and Williams gets the first down to the 33 yard line. Brian Dawkins comes up to make the stop. Well that's a counter style play. Let's look at it. C.J. Williams starts to his left, comes back to his right, and there's the block right there. An excellent job on Wardell Rouse and allows C.J. Williams to go up inside. There's a league game summary. Clemson moving ahead, 184 yards on the ground. Tommy Luganville finds C.J. Williams, and he's found by fifth-year senior Tim Jones. Thrown for a loss of three yards to the 30 yard line so it brings up second down at about 13. No running room there as Tim Jones stayed at home and waited for him to come outside. Jones a Buckus nominee. Out of Rock Hill South Carolina one of the leading tacklers. People four linebackers that have combined for 300 tackles thus far this season. Second down. Clemson showing blitz they roll out of it. Luganville to throw. It is incomplete. Intended for Zachary on the sidelines. It looks like a hole, but Britt Williams penetrated back there and flushed Luganville out of the pocket. Number 92, Britt Williams. Williams, a sophomore out of Athens, Georgia. Actually, Albany, Georgia. Well, here comes the dime. But they put six defensive backs in for Clemson to defend against the passing game of Georgia Tech. They've got six defensive backs in. Third and 11. Georgia Tech down by three. Rouse putting the heat on. Pass is complete. It's to Zachary, but it's well short of the first down. McCrory in on the tackle at the 33 yard line. Gain of about two, and the Clemson faithful applaud this defense that has played so well, not only this afternoon, but all season long. Let's take a look at it. Andy McCrory is playing linebacker. He's a defensive back, and there he is, number five, as he comes in and makes the hit on Zachary Dragon back across the middle. There's the kick by Bender. Boy, he's gotten off some buttes today. This one no different. To the 18-yard line, Humphrey running for his life. Gets maybe two yards. A 48-yard punt by Jason Bender. Second in the country coming in. Clemens makes the tackle. Yeah. 
Join us for a great college football matchup at the Outback Steakhouse Gator Bowl December 30th. Send a postcard with your name, address, and telephone number to the address you see on the screen and register to win a trip for two, including game tickets, hotel, and airfare. The winner will be announced during our ACC Game of the Week next week. Must be 21 years of age or older to enter. Clemson with the football, first and 10 at their own 21-yard line. We have 12.32 remaining in the fourth quarter. Clemson on top by a Nelson Welch 27-yard field goal, 13 to 10. Neilon Green at the control, going long on first down. Has Guess out there. We've got a flag down on the play. Lethon Flowers covering. This may be offensive pass interference. Well, Clemson has come out and thrown three times on first down, and uh, they have to. I think Georgia Tech's forcing them to. It is offensive pass interference as Guess pushed Lethon Flowers from behind. Well, let, let's watch it. He fakes to Pekis. Green is back, sets his feet. And there's the shove, I guess, by Guess, number 21. Let's take one more look at it. Green's got plenty of time, steps into it, and really throws it. Well, it's uh, it might have just bumped him to keep him from catching the ball. And it's going to be first down again, but it's going to be first and 20. First and 25, actually. Here's the handoff to Pekis, and Pekis threatens to get a good piece of that back out to the 23-yard line. Mike D makes the tackle. Let's go to the sidelines and Brett McMillan. Steve, you may have noticed something missing from the Georgia Tech offense in this half as uh, Jeff Papushak is out for the rest of the game. He's got a sprained medial collateral in his right knee. And also, uh, with the controversial plays that they had here back at the previous Georgia Tech drive on the punt and the next play, this Clemson crowd got as loud as it has been all day long. And to prepare for this, Georgia Tech practiced yesterday with jet engine sounds back in Atlanta. Now, the loss of Jeff Papushak, though, is not lost on that uh, and that offensive unit, they need him back there. This is going to be Elon Green rushing out of the pocket. The ball falls loose, but it's out of bounds at the 30-yard line. A gain of about seven. And he's going to be very close to the first down. Boyd Andrews in there on the tackle. He needed the 31. And let's see what kind of a mark. They're going to give him short of the first down. He's going to be a half yard short. So it'll bring up third down and one. But as Coach Dooley mentioned, Jeff Papashak out of the H-back situation gave Georgia Tech that extra blocker, and they miss him. Clemson four out of 11 on third down. They're third and one here. Handoff goes to Raymond Priester, and his forward progress indicates he's got another Clemson first down at the 32-yard line. Well, Clemson employed an unbalanced line, and I don't think Georgia Tech moved over to it. And as a result, Clemson had an advantage and handed the ball to Priester, the freshman fullback, and he got the needed yardage. So Clemson keeps their drive alive at the 32-yard line. Tommy West looking on. He knows while his club has the lead, they need another score as Georgia Tech's been moving the football. But their defense is playing well. And off goes to Pegues. And Pegues is up over the 35-yard line, out to the 37. Hickson in on the tackle along with Zach Piller, a true freshman out of Tallahassee, Florida, on Pegues. And Lamont Pegues has had a quietly effective day for the Clemson offense. Well, they keep moving the chains, and that's what it's all about. He may not be breaking any big, long runs, but he's been very consistent. 72 yards against North Carolina a week ago, and he's close to 100 today. Second and five. Green hands off to Emory Smith. And its younger brother striving for the 40, where he may have picked up about three. Rodney Wilkerson, Don Hickson in on the tackle. Well, there's outstanding linebackers on both sides, Cox and Wilkinson for Georgia Tech. And of course, we've talked about the Clemson linebackers. Here's a good look. Here's number 40 as he comes in and makes the hit along with Don Hickson, number 30. Hickson had a bundle of hold up there and Emory Smith, third down at about two. Elon Green with a keep, got hit once behind, and he'll get the first down. Elon Green, Hickson finally brings him down 
He was hit originally in the backfield by Rodney Wilkerson. Well, Wilkerson couldn't wrap him up. And that's just a tribute to Green that he just kept fighting. Here's the option play back to the weak side. There's Wilkinson, number 40, making the hit. And then, G, the free safety. Number four comes in, Freddie Cougar, number 40, comes in and makes the hit. Lethorn Flowers. I'm going to get it right here in a second. I, <laughs> I finally did. Flowers was watching the pitch man that time and came in maybe a step late. This is the seventh play of Clemson's drive. It started at their own 21. First and 10, and here comes the keys. We have a flag. The Gies to the 43 of Georgia Tech. Well, let's see what the flag is going to be. Mike D on the tackle. Offside against Georgia Tech, so the play will stand. A 15 yard game. Offside. Defense. Clearly declined. First down. What we're seeing here, Bill, is Clemson's offensive line rising to the occasion. Watch Pekis break it outside. There's the free safety G missing. Now this guy can make a lot of people miss. He, he's a good runner. Got a timeout on the field with 9.24 left to play in the football game. Clemson leads it by a field goal. We are back at Clemson. It's Hall of Fame day. And there's Jeff Papashak. Just add one more major injury to the Georgia Tech lineup. Seven players out for the season. We don't know what Papashak's status is for the remaining two games, but he's certainly in street clothes done for the afternoon. First down, 10 yards to go. Emory Smith, the fullback, getting the call, and he gets to the 40-yard line. The yards start to come hard now on the Georgia Tech end of the field. Rogers in on the tackle along with Bill News. Well, the Georgia Tech defense stiffens, and there's not much running running room there for Smith, the big fullback. So that's coming up on second and eight. Ball at the 40-yard line. Play action for Neilon Green, headed for the sidelines. Nice change of direction, and he gets down to the 24-yard line. Brought down by Ryan Stewart. Well, Nealon Green has is, is done very well pulling that ball down and running with it today. This is a misdirection style play where they fake the sweep, and Green comes out the weak side looking for a receiver. He doesn't hesitate. He pulls the ball down and runs on the inside arm of the would-be tackler. Oh, he gets a pretty good lick there by number 24, Stewart. First and 10 after the 17-yard gain, Lamont Pegues gets inside the 22-yard line down to the 21. It's a gain of three. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Tommy West looking on. His offense running well. This drive started at the 21-yard line. It's in its 11th play. They're at the Georgia Tech 22. The Geese inside the 20 brought down by Rogers and also Patrick Bradley at the 18 yard line. Well, Rogers does an excellent job of beating the lead blocker number 18 Smith and uh, Emory was not able to move Rogers at all. And of course he made the tackle on the Geese. Clemson has used five minutes off this clock. George O'Leary wonders what the scoreboard will look like when his offense gets the ball back. Clemson has been very effective when it gets inside people's 20 yard line. 24 possessions and 12 scores. Here comes the handoff to Pegues inside the 10 for the first down. Boy, that's good tough running right there. Pegues goes up inside. And number 58, Deuce makes the tackle. Watch McGee's go up inside. Good block by 18, number Smith. 18, Smith. And look at that second effort running. That's the kind of back a coach likes to have. It's a gain of 11 yards down to the eight-yard line. First and goal. Clemson actually 21 of 24 in the red zone. Here comes Emory Smith battling to the five-yard line. Patrick Bradford in on the tackle. Gain of three on the play, 
13th play of the drive, 6.47, clock moving. Georgia Tech with two timeouts, Clemson with one. Well, Clemson employed the unbalanced line again, and I don't believe Georgia Tech moved over. But Bradford, number 79, has been very active from his defensive tackle position. He's had on a lot of plays today. Second down and goal from the four. Hand off Pickies. And Pickies gets very little room. Zach Pillars with the ball, or with the tackle, the ball popped loose, but it popped loose on the ground. Patrick Bradford recovers. Zach Pillars on the tackle, no gain. And it's going to be third down inside the four to the, about the three and a half. Third and goal. Well, this is a big play for Clemson. The third down right here. They need to get more than three points out of it to, to make sure that uh, Georgia Tech can't beat them with a score. One touchdown. They want to make it a two possession game. Here comes Neilon Green. Touchdown, Clemson, for the second time today. Well, as a well-executed option play, and Green again keeps the ball up inside. The option play has been very effective for the Clemson Tigers today. Eh? Weak side play. Big score for the Tigers. Let's watch as Neilon Green goes to the tight end side, weak side. He fakes to Smith, number 18, gets a good block. And Elon Green, as they say, smells the end zone and goes in there and gets that touchdown. There was a flag on the play, but it was offsides. Georgia Tech declined, obviously. Nelson Welch's kick after Elon Green's touchdown is good. And the Tigers tack on an all-important touchdown. With 5.43 to go, they lead it by 10. Elon Green scores for the second time this afternoon, and the Clemson Tigers take a 10-point lead on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. They chewed six and a half better than that off the clock in 15 plays. You know, we've had six scores this afternoon, and five of them have been on drives of 11 plays or more. Clemson has had a 16-play march for a score. This one a 15-play march. Georgia Tech needing two possessions to regain the lead. Here's Perryman. And Perryman is brought down at the 26-yard line. The tackle made by David Zeiler on special teams. Let's take a look at scores elsewhere around the country on this busy, busy Saturday of college football. Duke leading NC State up in Raleigh in the third. It's Mississippi State trying to send Alabama out of the unbeaten ranks. Illinois, shocking, unbeaten Penn State in the fourth by 10. Our score, 20 to 10. Clemson over Georgia Tech. Tommy Lugerville to the air. Pass complete to Charlie Simmons, his first such today. Tim Jones tackles him at the 32-yard line. It's a gain of about six. Well, Charlie Simmons has been quiet. He's uh, been one of the leading receivers for Georgia Tech, but they just have not gotten the ball to him. Luganville is capable of getting his team upfield in a hurry. A couple of weeks ago in Chapel Hill, second play of the game on first and 20. He gets upstairs 75 yards for a score. He needs some scores here. There's the pass. It is complete to Simmons again for a first down in Clemson territory at the 48. Andre Carter on the tackle. Well, Luganville does a good job of getting the ball in the crease. Watch Luganville. He's got time to set his feet. And he's going to throw in between the cornerback and the safety. There's 43, the cornerback forward, and then the deep man. So he hits him right in the crease. First and 10. That was part of the free safety. Georgia Tech. Busted play coming up here. Luganville out of the pocket. Wisely gets out of bounds at the 48-yard line to stop the clock with 4.38 left. Georgia Tech with only two timeouts remaining. Luganville, son of Coach Al Luganville, the former San Diego State coach, who was a defensive coordinator under Bill Lewis at Wyoming. He's in attendance this afternoon, watching his son play, staring at second down and 10. Georgia Tech trails 
Clemson, five-man rush. Flair pass, C.J. Williams stuffed Andy McCrory. Very good play by McCrory. Again, Clemson had their dime defense in where they put six defensive backs. Let's take a look at it as Luganville is in the shotgun. He starts to his right and throws back a little screen pass. And there's McCrory, number five, coming up with the tackle. McCrory, as I mentioned, was an ex-defensive back that they use in linebacker for special occasions. Third and seven, trailing by ten. Luganville back to throw. Luganville over the middle, and it goes to Jason Bender, and he's got the first down. Mark him down at the 37 yard line. That was surgery by Luganville, right in between Andre Humphrey and Andy McCrory. Well, Luganville really threaded the needle on that pass to, uh, to Bender. Goes, there's 17, Luganville coming right in. The linebacker's right on him, and he puts the ball right on the money. And McCrory, number five, was almost face guarding in the face of Jason Bender. Third, or the first down, 339 left to play. Clock moving, Luganville with plenty of time and lots of room. Let's it air out to Bender. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. What poise by Luganville to keep waiting. There's a flag on the play there. Let's see what the flag's all about. Back at the 31 yard line. Ineligible man downfield. Call it back. Well, that's a shame. You know, you have to say that Tommy Luganville displayed a lot of poise of waiting, waiting, waiting for Jason Bender to get open and then threw the ball to him. And now for receiver downfield. Five yard penalty, previous spot, replay first down. So Luganville will get it over again. You saw George O'Leary at the end of that play after the penalty coming against his club, told his club, hang on. We've got time. Calm down. Don't let it get to you. A lot of poise for a guy who's the interim head coach, defensive coordinator, all rolled into one and had four days to think about. It. Carlos Smith gets off a count early. Michael Cheever's trying to say that there was a Clemson man in the neutral zone. But he won't win the argument. So Georgia Tech backing up now back to the 48 yard line of Clemson. Ball start, offense, five yard penalty, first down. That stops the clock with 325 left. It's now first and 20. Georgia Tech down by 10. Simpson in his face. It is complete to Charlie Simmons for the first down at the 22 yard line. Again, Luganville throws that ball in between the free safety, number 28, Carter, and behind number 43, Ford. Luganville's in the shotgun. Let's watch it. Good protection by the Georgia Tech offensive line. He lets it go, and there he is. Right in between 43 and 28, Ford and Carter, and makes a big catch. 25 yards downfield for the first down of the 22. Three minutes even left to go. Big rush on for Clemson. The pass incomplete for Charlie Simmons. Well, he had to get rid of that one in a hurry. His feet wasn't set and had to let it go. Clemson had the blitz on. That stops the clock with 2.54 left. Again, Georgia Tech has two timeouts. Well, Clemson keeps sending in fresh pass rushes. If you'll notice, they're making a wholesale substitution so they can get people that can get upfield and put the pressure on Tommy Luganville at quarterback. Forney, White, and Williams are the middle three. And Cross is in there, so four down linemen. A four-man rush, Luganville passes. Incomplete intended for Simmons. McLean nearly picked it off. Well, that was good pressure by the four down front people, making Luganville throw the football before he's ready. 2.49 left to play. And third down coming again. Not only does Luganville have to look at clock management, but he's got to get some real estate here to keep the drive alive. He needs the inside the 12 yard line for the first down. 
He's at the 21 and a half. Clemson showing blitz. Luganville throws. It's knocked away by Marvin Cross for the second time this afternoon. That's a big defensive play by Cross, number 91. Again, Clemson had what we refer to as a bad defense. Six defensive backs. Let's take a look at it. Luganville in the shotgun again. And watch number 91 defeat his block, come to the outside, and get his hands up and knock the ball down. And George O'Leary is saying, well, we need 10, so let's get three here, and he sends Chris Leon on the field. <laughs> he motions for the offense to get it done and get it done now. Play clock shows seven. This will be a 38-yard field goal from the left half. All right, they can get it off. The play clock expired on him. Delay of game, the call. So this will back it up and make it a 43-yard kick. Dead ball, delay of game, offense, five-yard penalty, repeat fourth down. Leon has hit him a 49. He has a 42-yarder late in the first half of this ball game. He needs a 43-yarder here to pull Georgia Tech within seven. Graham Strong on the holder. He needs a 44-yarder. Boyd Andrews with the snap. Strowman is a quarterback. There's the kick. No good. Kick is no good. Leon misses. The Clemson defense holds, and they still have a 10-point lead. Next Saturday, our X on ACC Game of the Week. Many of you will see the Battle of the Palmetto State. Clemson hosting the game. Cox of South Carolina. Others will see arch rivals Duke and North Carolina face off. Check your local listings for the game in your area and tune in at noon Eastern next Saturday. The Clemson defense rises to the occasion. They hold Georgia Tech out of the end zone. Chris Leone miss his third field goal attempt of the afternoon after hitting a 41-yarder. One partially blocked from 42, and one from 44 that fell short. Lamont McGee's on first down, gets up over the 30-yard line. Bill Noose picks him up at the 32. It's a gain of about four on the play. Well, Lamont's had a, an excellent day. He has really run the football up in there. Good, tough running. And uh, between he and uh, Neilon Green, they have been the majority of the Clemson offense. Elon Green talking things over. We have a timeout on the field called by Georgia Tech. They have one left with 2.36 remaining. Elon Green's had an excellent day, second leading rusher for the Clemson Tigers this afternoon, and he scored twice. And his score about three minutes ago is the big one in this ball game that's given Clemson a 10-point lead on Georgia Tech. Let's go to the sidelines and Brett McMillan. Steve, an update on Raymond Priester. He has a bruised shoulder, but he will be back in the game as the Tigers look to kind of just run out the clock. And they've done just that so far with Lamont Pegues and other folks. But the Clemson defense, Bill, rose to the occasion midway through the third quarter. They felt that on one punt situation, they should have gotten the ball on a fumble. It was ruled against them. They thought three plays later they should have picked up the ball on a fumble. It didn't happen. So then they took the ball on a 16-play march and tacked on uh, a very big score. Well, they certainly have, but I think Papashak, the big tight end, going out of the ball game for Georgia Tech has hurt the Georgia Tech offense because it did not allow them to open the holes that C.J. Williams had had earlier. So that I think that's going to hurt. I know that Coach O'Leary pulled that defense over to the side to tell them, listen, tackle that football, jam in there, don't let Clemson make the first down. Second down and five. Saw Neilon Green's numbers on the day. This is Emory Smith, and he gets to the 34-yard line. Another timeout, the final timeout of the game taken by Georgia Tech. They are out of timeouts. They stop the clock with 2.25 left, and they are their defense now faced with a third and two. Well, the Georgia Tech defense pinched 
they did not allow Clemson to move them off the ball. So that's exactly what Coach O'Leary was talking about when he called them over to the sidelines. So the timeout by Georgia Tech is their last. Elon Green talking things over with Tommy West. Young man who is a timeout situation on the reset. Elon Green out of Yonkers, New York, true freshman, coming in here less than 100%. A mild shoulder dislocation suffered in the Duke game several weeks ago. But he has thrown effectively enough this afternoon, and when he hasn't had to throw, he's kept the ball and made good decisions. There's Rick Stock still, the co-offensive coordinator with Clyde Christensen, who's up in the booth. And Stock still also coaches the wide receivers, sending Elon Green back to the Clemson huddle. We have 2.25 remaining in this one. Clemson up 20 to 10. Two Nelson Welch field goals and two touchdowns by Elon Green. On third down and three, here's the hot McGee's. McGee spins out, but they have spun away from a first down. Well, he had the first down and he's trying to get extra yardage. I think he lost it. I don't think he's got it. They marked him down at the 36. He needed the 37. Let's watch it. There's Smith making the block, and Pegues is up inside. He's got it. If he had just gone north and south, he would have made it. But he went east and west, and of course, Georgia Tech makes a big play by number 15, Hendricks, along with 24, Stewart. So it's fourth down and about a yard, and Clemson taking their time. Under two minutes to play. Clock rolling down. Eight seconds on the play clock here as Green comes back in the huddle. Clemson may take a delay of game. Now they'll take a timeout as the play clock was about to run out. So that stops the clock with a minute 33 left to play. And a timeout on the field. So Clemson talks things over on fourth and one. A minute 33 left to play in our Exxon ACC game of the week. Clemson leading Georgia Tech 20 to 10. That's our helmet cam. Nathan Perryman back in punt formation. Nelson Welch back there as well. Play clock going down to 17. He'll kick it away. Georgia Tech sent them all. Perryman picks it up at the 20-yard line and probably should have gotten out of bounds, but didn't. Darnell Stevens makes the tackle. 45-yard punt by Nelson Welch. Georgia Tech now will take the field with no timeouts and down by 10. A win today evens Clemson's record at 5-5. Five and five. They have a chance to finish the season above 500 with South Carolina coming in next week. Of course, the bowl is not even a possibility because they don't have enough Division I-A wins. Luganville now. At his own 21 yard line. Scrambling for his life from Stevens. A pass complete to Zachary, but how much yardage there? Andre Humphrey decks him after a three yard gain. Well, Zachary does a good job of catching the ball coming over the middle, but Humphreys really comes up and puts a lick on Zachary, number one. It's like. Wardell Rouse was shaken up on the play. Clock stops while Clemson's uh, athletic training staff takes the field for Rouse, and he'll come off the field under his own power. Georgia Tech will come out and line up with a minute six left to go. They're down by 10, 20 to 10. And they need two possessions. The blitz there's the pass it is complete to Jason Bender and Bender is close to the first down marker. He's had several key catches today. He's out to the 32 yard line. Michael Barber in on the tackle for Clemson. Well they had a little twist on that time. They sent the ends down hard and twisted the inside people outside to get a little different look of a pass rush. Got the first down. Tommy Luganville trying to make quick business of some long real estate here. Whistle, flag down on the play. And we've got some movement along the Georgia Tech offensive line ahead of the play. That'll stop the clock with 49 seconds left to go. Dead ball, ball start, offense, five yard penalty. And 
And so Georgia Tech will get another shot at it. George O'Leary taking over this week as the interim head coach when Bill Lewis stepped down. The step down at this time gives Georgia Tech time in the recruiting season to find a successor. Here comes Luganville. Back to throw. Throws a duck out there that Carter will pick off. Well, he had great pressure put on him, and he didn't remember. Darnell Stevens came in and had great pressure on him, and he had to get rid of that football. It's the first turnover of the game, but it's the fourth interception by Andre Carter on the season. There's number 30 coming. There's Carter picking it off. And as Steve mentioned, that's the fourth interception. He's the leading pass interceptor on the Clemson football team. So that pretty much does it. Clemson has the ball. Georgia Tech cannot stop the clock. And the Tigers can just sit on it twice. The remaining 42 seconds, and they'll have themselves their fifth victory of the season. Clock will roll on as Neilon Green downs it once. What a day for this young freshman out of Yonkers, New York. A true freshman had an outstanding football game this afternoon. And the maturity displayed by this Clemson team in light of a rocky start. They took some shots at them here in Death Valley, but uh, this team has really shown its mettle in the second half of the season. There, the clock will run without impediment now, and the Clemson Tigers have pulled off a 20 to 10 win over the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech with a loss falls to one and eight with two games remaining. Wake Forest and their season ender with Georgia. For Clemson, just one more time around. Next coming Saturday against South Carolina. 20 to 10, the final Clemson with a win. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week was brought to you by Exxon and their independent dealers and distributors who invite you to stop by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. Rely on the Tiger. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. The vision to power your dreams. By First Union. When it comes to service, everything matters. By Win dixie the low-price leader. By Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. Lowe's knows home improvement. By Burger King, home of Whopper values. Get your burgers worth at Burger King. And by your local Mazda dealers. The Clemson Tigers prevail over Georgia Tech to even their record at 5-5 five five with a 20-10 victory over the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. And let's go to the sidelines and Breck McMillan. I'm here with Clemson coach Tommy West. Coach, three in a row, you guys are really coming around. I thought that, uh, boy, we really came back in the second half and played with some emotion. We didn't play very emotionally in the first half. I know you said you wanted to go with the orange pants today because you felt like the team would have enough emotion against South Carolina. You want to kind of get them going this week. Yeah, orange pants mean a lot to us. There's a lot of people that played in those orange pants before us uh, that gave it a great tradition. Uh, we're just trying, we're trying to carry it on right now. Defensively, what did you do differently in the second half? I just think we played with emotion. We didn't change anything scheme-wise. We, we just played with more emotion defensively. All right, next week, you got the Gamecocks and a chance for a winning record. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy this one for a little while, and then we'll, we'll go to work on them tomorrow. All right, thanks a lot. Congratulations, okay. Coach. All right, Steve, back to you. Thank you very much, Brett McMillan. Thank you, Tommy West, Clemson coach, who evens his record now for this season at 5-5. Five and five. Of course, overall, he has a winning record here at Clemson if you count the win in the Peach Bowl last year. His first game as Clemson coach. 20-10, to 10, the Tigers win it. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Back in Death Valley, Clemson prevails over Georgia Tech 20 to 10 in our Exxon ACC Game of the Week. Let's take a look at our Burger King players of the game for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. C.J. Williams, 79 yards rushing in the first half, 117 and a touchdown for the game for Georgia Tech. For Neilon Green, 111 yards rushing on the day and two touchdowns to lead the Clemson Tigers. And standing by on the field with Neilon Green is our Brett McMillan. All right, thanks a lot, Steve. Neilon, the offense is really starting to come around. Yeah. Yeah, we came out, we wanted to um, just pound on them, pound on them, you know, just trying to run the ball. But, you know, we ran the ball effective, we threw the ball effective, and we just came out with the win. I know anytime you you guys work well offensively, it's the offensive line that's doing it for you. 
Yeah, I mean, um, we came along from the years, from the um, beginning of the season. You know, we struggled a little bit, but, you know, they, they woke up in the last four games. You know, we want to go down next week and beat the Gamecocks. What has surprised you coming in as a freshman quarterback? Anything? Not really. You know, I just wanted to wait my chance, you know. Um, the chance came to me, you know, I just had to produce when I get in. All right, the defense a good game today, too. Darnell Stevens here with me. Darnell, congratulations. Three in a row. What did you guys do differently in the second half? Anything at all? We didn't change our scheme at all. We just played very flat in the first half. We decided as a defense, we're going to come out and play with a little bit more enthusiasm, get to the ball, and swan the ball, and tackle well. And that's all we had to do. I know Coach talked about needing you get to get get you guys to play with more emotion. What was Why was it there a flatness today? That's something you can't explain. You know, we just didn't come out with a lot of emotion. In the second half, we decided that we had to turn it up a notch. You know, turn the volume up, turn the heat up, whatever you want to call it. But defense had to come to play in the second half. We didn't play well in the first half, but we had to come to play in the second half. Next week, you got the game, Cox, and chance at a winning record. It's going to be a dog fight, and I'm looking forward to it. All right, Steve, that's it from the field. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Brett McMillan. And I guess that's appropriate, really, when you look at what Clemson achieved this afternoon. Neil on Green got it done offensively, but they needed the defense to shut down a Georgia Tech team that had some success moving the ball on the ground, particularly in the first half. Well, they did when they had Papasak at the H-back, and uh, C.J. Williams was running, but Papasak was a lead blocker. You know, Stevens was right. Rouse and Stevens really put pressure on Luganville, did not give him time to get his feet set, and that was a big difference in that ball game. And they've done that continually this season. They did against North Carolina last week, rising to the occasion and holding the Tar Heels, the best rushing team in the ACC, to just 11 yards total rushing on the ground. And I guess today, another testament to how well this defense has played for Tommy West all season while his offense has had a chance to mature. Well, another big factor that I, I want to mention is no turnovers. Again, no turnovers by the Clemson offense. And anytime you can do that, you've got a great opportunity to win the football game. I think they've only had seven turnovers in the entire season. One fumble. One fumble that they've lost all season long. That's incredible for as young as this team is. But Clemson prevails today by a score of 20 to 10 over Georgia Tech. We'll be right back. Clemson beats Georgia Tech 20 to 10. Steve Martin here along with Bill Dooley. You know, Bill, you talked about only one fumble from this offensive unit. That says something, especially when Clemson broke off two long drives this afternoon. Well, it's unbelievable how many times all year long that they have handled that football and to only lose one fumble, that may set some kind of record. Well, the Clemson Tigers have a chance to finish the season above 500 as they take on South Carolina next week. Clemson's Neilon Green scores twice. Nelson Welch has a couple of field goals, and the Tigers beat Georgia Tech by a score of 20 to 10. Our executive producer for ACC football is Jimmy Rayburn. Wendy Boyd produced this afternoon's game, and our director, Gary Clem. And, of course, a great crowd of 71,000 watched on here at Death Valley. Hall of Fame day, and they saw a Hall of Fame performance by the Clemson defense in particular in the second half and an offensive unit that is really increasing in maturity. Next week, you'll see either South Carolina take on Clemson or North Carolina face Duke in our Exxon ACC Game of the Week. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Jefferson Pilot Sports production staff outfitted by Lee Apparel, the brand that fits. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football. The Clemson Tigers defeat the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets 20 to 10. For Coach Bill Dooley, I'm Steve Martin for Brett McMillan. So long from Clemson. <laughs>